Quite frankly, my relationship with tiny whoops was always of a love and then completely ignore of a kind. Yes, they are awesome. You can fly them in-house. You can fly them during the winter. Fantastic. But then whenever the spring came, they were just going to the shelf and I was never using them again. Okay, maybe not never, but I still have some models from like 2016 that are just on the shelf, never touched for the last six or seven years. Because let's be honest, if you have a beautiful weather and you can go outside to fly with something bigger, why to stay indoors? But my approach to tiny whoops is slightly changing. For the last four months, I'm actually training, even though I have a beautiful weather outside. But you might ask, but why, Pavel? What really changed? Partially, just sometimes, I don't feel like going to my favorite flying spot. Tiny whoops are getting better and better. I have this place over here here that is under the roof when until now I can fly freely the whole attic is just one empty space you can fly whoops as much as you like in a few months it will change though so I do have to take my time and use it for as long as I can and finally because well tiny whoops are really fun to fly and they are most probably the simplest the cheapest and the most efficient way to start with FPV. After recording my video from February, when I said that I cannot fly tiny whoops, I got me a tiny whoop. Nothing fancy, just the Beta FPV Meteor 65. Then, from the Beta FPV, one more time, I got the Meteor 75. And then, I never really saw a flying technology as simple to embrace as those two. Yes, I got the Meteor 65 with my own money. Yes, Beta FPV later send me Meteor 75, so this is clear. If you want to start, there's nothing really simple. All you have to have is the Express LRS compatible radio and the analog goggles. No need to flash anything, no need to install special boards in your radio, like do the mambo jumbo we had to do like eight years ago when we wanted to fly tiny whoops. You power cycle the tiny whoop three times to enter the Express LRS binding mode, you bind, you choose the channel on your analog goggles and you are ready to fly. And as long as you fly indoors, you should be fine. Those things are indestructible. You can hit walls, you can hit people, you can hit yourself. Nothing most probably will break. Yeah, sure, of course. If you overdo it, you might break the frame. But besides that, <laughs> I have no idea idea how you can kill a tiny whoop without really 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 trying or having a bad luck. Let's make something clear. I'm not world's best FPV pilot and definitely I'm not world best whoop pilot. For the seven inches I usually know my moves and I feel somehow comfortable behind the sticks. For the five inches eh, maybe okay absolutely not racing level. For the whoops however I do have to admit I suck. Even though I try to train for the last few months, I still suck with the tiny whoops. After all, the flight model and the general constraints of where you can fly with the tiny whoops are completely different. When you fly outside, well, the sky is basically the limit. When you fly inside with the whoop, you always have to remember when the track ends, because track ends with a wall. Yes, sure, nothing will happen. I still was not able to break either the Meteor 65 or the Meteor 75 I'm training with, but it's there. If you hit it, the turtle mode is the only way around. And God bless the turtle mode. Without this, flying would be a nightmare. You would have to be very, very, very careful not to hit anything. But one of the best things about Tiny Whoop is that Tiny Whoops, at least comparing to the situation from years ago, no longer use cloud source software to which you have no access to. Tiny Whoops run 
Beta Flight. But to be more precise, Tiny Whoop Run Beta Flight, Emu Flight, and INAF. Yes, absolutely. My Meteor 65 is running INAF and I love it, while my Meteor 75 is running Beta Flight and I also love it. To flash the alternative firmware, you only have to find the alternative firmware hacks compiled by someone and flash it. Yes, I know with INAF it's not the official release and you have to dig or just go into the description and click the link where you can find the INAF target for the beta FPV F411s. So basically all the beta FPV tiny whoops compatible. Flash it, configure and fly. And surprise, surprise, INAF handles tiny whoops quite nicely. If you try it, you might be really surprised that INAF can fly such a small devices. And if you want to, you might even get a chance of connecting the GPS to a tiny whoop and have the position hold. Not perfect, but yeah, it is possible. So overall, this is not the review of the Meteor 75 or Meteor 65 from Beta FPV. This is just the example and the proof that even the guy who loves seven inch freestyle drones can find fun with the tiny whoops and can fly them whenever he just cannot fly outside. It's cheap, it's fun, you can get stick time almost everywhere and here's the next video you should watch. It was the FPV University, I'm Paweł Spychalski, thank you very much for watching and like always happy flying and I bet you never really expected you can fly tiny whoops with INAF, don't you?